Nope, it's too formal. <laughs> oh, I'm missing my coffee. That's what I'm missing. Hello. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. Uh, most likely you're new here, so welcome. I am Skye, and I mostly do vlogs, but today we're doing something a little different. Mainly because I'm getting bored of just vlogs. They're still gonna be on the channel because they're fun to do, but I have recently realized that I do really enjoy creating videos and editing them, and just enjoying the editing process right now, and I wanna do more and learn more about that. So, we are going to be creating a book today. We're doing some book binding. I wanna get more tangible. I wanna get, I wanna, get, I wanna make things. I, wanna, I just wanna touch things. So, I am going to be creating the Book of Shadows <laughs> from Charmed. Uh, Charmed was one of my favorite shows that growing up as a kid it's also october so like might as well get into the spooky witch season and i'm in my spooky witch vibes right now checking my pumpkin spice because i can't get enough of it unfortunately <laughs> what i've done done so far is i did this yesterday is i took large sketchbook that one of my friends gave me when she was moving out of her dorm took this sketchbook and i basically cut all the pages out save for these end pages that are glued to the um cover and then I took about a half inch off of the cut side and I didn't like cut it. I more like, I, I tore it off to give it sort of a nice, nicer edge. And you can, you can definitely tell like which are the raw edges because these were the raw edges of the book like that. This is the side that I ripped and you can definitely tell because it's a little bit more fuzzier than this side that's a little bit more tough and dry but at least it fits with the, instead of, it fits more with the book itself than just being a straight edge. So yeah, I did that. I took all the pieces out. There were some that were used. So I took those out, like some of them had her drawings on them. So I took those out and stuck them in a safe spot. And then I also went through to make sure the pages that I wanted to use were pretty okay. Like there's some stains on some of these from when I was doing coffee staining and just general watercolor, which is fine. It just adds a little more character to the book. So after I picked all the piece, pieces of paper out that I wanted to use, I folded them in half to create about a, a seven by almost nine surface. So the book is, is still gonna be, it's gonna be um, like journal size, almost journal size, instead of being the massive size that it was. And then I created my signatures out of that. This is really thick paper. So I had to only do two pieces inside of each. But today I need to create stitching holes and bind it together and get this going. I don't have the actual cover made yet. I need to do that, but I have to get the material for it and I won't be able to get that until this Sunday. I can at least get the binding done, so I'm gonna hopefully get the stitching done today. It does tend to take me a while. I'm gonna do what's called a kettle stitch bind. This is not a tutorial for that, because this is gonna be my first time doing the kettle stitch. I usually go for like more of the French style, which has like crisscrosses, and it looks sort of like a corset on the back of the book. But I'm gonna try learning from something a little bit new today. I'm rainy, so it's voiceover sky time. Whoop whoop. <laughs> Sorry, that was awkward. So what I'm doing right now is I am doing what is called a jig. I hope that is actually a technical term. So I'm creating this template that has almost evenly measured out dots and those are where I'm gonna be putting my holes. So this helps me like keep them all sort of symmetrical. I'm having a bit of a hard time right now because <laughs> I can't decide how far apart I want them to be and how many I want because I like to have an even number of holes. It just, it helps me. And I ended up doing about six. They're not evenly, totally evenly spaced. You can see there in the middle, they're a little bit wider 
but it's totally fine. It works out in the end. And I actually learned this trick from school. I lined up all the pages and instead of individually like marking where I was gonna puncture the paper, I just lined them all up, put the jig right on top, and then used a ruler and a pencil and just dragged the pencil up to create marks. I would like to thank my mother for donating this cork board here. It helped puncturing these holes very easily. And then she also donated a pokey stick. We don't, I, she gave me the name of this. I don't know the actual term or the name for these. So we just call them pokey sticks. <laughs> it's very sharp. I did get myself a couple times with this. I line the tip up like that and then press down and boop, you got a hole. And I just do that with every single piece of paper, every signature. I made sure to go in the same order that they were marked with so that the holes were made almost as aligned as I could get them to be. Like I said before, this is not a tutorial for kettle stitch binding. I barely know what I was doing this entire time. I had to watch a tutorial quite a few different times. But I will say a trick that I figured out because I do have tiny, tiny baby hands and this paper is very thick is I would take these clips and just clip together the signature that I've already stitched to the new signature, making sure to keep it actually open so I could get access to the needle inside. And that's how I would stitch. And that's how I'm able to do like the bigger book projects as well. Uh, I also figured out that I needed to <laughs> repuncture some of the holes because again, this paper be thick and also my thread is a little thick as well. But you can see there how it's helping me keep everything aligned and together during the stitching process. Because I just pick up the book, set it back down, and the, the signature are staying in put. It's very helpful. Very useful. I recommend getting yourself some of these clips. A bulldog clip would have been better, but the one that I had is broken, so... Okay, so here's what I have so far. The finished text block with the kettle stitch binding. Of course, this was my first time doing it, so it's not perfect. Um, tonight, I do ha I have to get ready for work now, so I'm not gonna do it right now, but tonight I'm going to start the gluing process of just pressing this down and gluing it like so. And I'm gonna do a couple layers just cause it's such thick paper and the glue is probably going to be soaking into the spine a little bit. So I'm going to do a couple layers of that, put on a sheet of paper on the back, sort of like this. It's not going to be this sheet of paper because this one is too, well, it might be, but it's, I want it to be a little bit longer on each side, but like this to help sort of protect the spine a little bit more. And this will probably take me about two days between drawing processes. So yeah. Ta-da! <laughs> Good morning. It is about two days later. I got most of the gluing done. We just need to put the spine protector thingamajiggy on, which I'm gonna use a piece from a sketchbook just cause it's nice, thicker paper. So let me go ahead and show you what I have so far and my little like pressing setup cause I don't have an actual like book press. I need to make one, but right now I'm just using books. So let me just show you what I've got. So here's my book press. <laughs> this is actually Joe's book, um, but I have that, a dictionary, an old encyclopedia, and this is an art book, an artist book. And then of course, pieces of parchment to protect them since I don't want them to actually be glued all over. And as you can tell, I did two layers, two nice thick layers of glue. Here's what we have. But as you can see, the book is now nice and flat and it's resembling more along the lines of a book now. This is what's called a text block. And the spine isn't 
straight as I'd like to be. It's a little bit more down curve, but that is okay. So I want this to be flush. Brushes are his favorite thing. And here we start the process of gluing everything. So I used a faux leather for the actual cover itself. It's, nice, it's this very nice dark green. I think it's for upholstery, but I really enjoy it for actual like book binding. It makes a really nice cover sort of texture. And for this book, it actually suits it really well with all the cracks that are in it. I did the edges off of camera just because I'm not that great at them and you can tell a little bit right there where it's sort of pushed up a little bit. Obviously I wasn't able to get it all glued down. And this is where we get to, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I tried to do a fancy fold for the corners to sort of hide my mistakes because you can see that the, the edges of the corner are not that perfect, but that didn't work. So I ended up just measuring out decent corner shapes and just gluing them on much like I did with the spine as well. <laughs> so you can see that right here where they're just like decorative corner shapes. It's fine. It looks great. I don't care. This is for me. And then we do even more gluing. <laughs> And with the spine, I just took a uh, excess sheet of this pleather leather thing, measured it out from top to bottom, and then also measured out how big I wanted it to be. So much gluing. And then we are on to more gluing in my arch nemesis, which is actually connecting the book to the, the text block to the cover. And you can see here that I decided that I needed to hide my mistake of measuring the cover too far yet again so i'm making these end pages that sort of go over the page glued to the book you can tell i pet my cat i felt something on his head and he had glue in his fur so give me a minute i gotta get my cat cleaned up here and i'm not just wanted to say i'm not choking him i'm holding the back of his head and like the top of his jaw almost just to keep his head straight while i tugged that piece of glue off. I've been forgiven. He's sitting on my arm. I, I'm definitely forgiven. But yeah, I made these sort of end pages and they help hide the fact that I measured the, the cover too much. And they sort of keep it all secure there too. And now, finally, we're on to painting. Yes! Part of this that makes it all come together makes it worth my efforts. I had to quickly sketch out several times actually the uh, symbol on the front of the book. I'm not quite sure what it's called. I should really know what it's called but I don't. Um, and I did paint this a few times and don't worry if you mess it up it actually comes off quite easily with just a wet wipe. So this is painted with acrylic and I went over the lines a couple times just because the dark green kind of makes it hard to see the red so I went over it a couple times just to see it and then I went in with a sponge and dabbed on a darker green color and I made sure to dab it on all the areas that I thought would eventually start looking worn because this is supposed to be like a really old book and I would go in I also went in a little bit later on with some darker browns get the edges a little bit more as well just deepen all the dark colors And then I'm also cleaning up the edges as well while I'm here with that same dark green to help sort of hide them. And without further ado, let me show you the end result. It is done. Book of Shadows is complete after about a week and a half of work. Final thoughts. 
for some reason the glue on the spine was not drying so i ended up having to you can definitely tell i had to hot glue so i need to figure out what happened there just for some reason this wasn't drying at all like when i lifted it up the glue was still wet so that's a little weird i also could have stained the pages instead of just painting them to make them look a little bit old like i did a little bit of a coffee stain could have done more and then also i can always play with my edges because <laughs> i'm not very good at corners yet but overall i am very pleased with how this came out strictly for decoration purposes because when you open it the spine again is not glued down so this is a decoration only not to be used but uh yeah if you like this video please give it a thumbs up Leave a comment down below on what you'd like to see me to create next. See me create next. I can't talk anymore. And if you'd like to see more content, please subscribe. I hope to bring more videos like this soon on top of the vlogs as well. Maybe even some more art videos. But uh, yeah, see you guys in the next video.